The Lord be with you. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon and forgiveness of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Jesus Christ, only 
Almighty God, send down upon your church the riches of your spirit and kindle in all who minister the gospel your countless gifts of grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. These are the descendants of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham was the father of Isaac. And Isaac was forty years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean of Padan Aram, sister of Laban, the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife, because she was barren. And the Lord granted his prayer, and his wife Rebekah conceived. The children struggled together within her, and she said, If it is to be this way, why do I live? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples born of you shall be divided. One shall be stronger than the other, the elder shall serve the younger. When her time to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy mantle, so they named him Izu. Afterwards his brother came out, with his hand gripping Izu's heel, so he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. When the boys grew up, Izu was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man living in tents. Isaac loved Izu because he was fond of game, but Rebecca loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking a stew, Izu came in from the field and he was famished. Izu said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stuff for I am famished. Therefore he was called Edom. Jacob said, First sell me your birthright. Izu said, I am about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, Swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Izu bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went this way. Thus Izu despised his birthright. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, indeed it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies 
also through his spirit that dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered round him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. As he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground where they did not have much soil and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose they were scorched and since they had no root they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is and was and is to come. Amen. I was born in an RAF hospital in Nocton in Lincolnshire, where my dad, Ted, was doing his national service learning to be a wireless operator. That's the old sort of wireless, meaning radio. He used Morse code a lot too. I am sure most people know what that is, but in case you do not, it's a system of electrical sounds transmitted via a telegraph machine. Some sounds were short and some longer, signifying letters of the alphabet. The code was written in dots, dashes and spaces, and if you knew what the combination of sounds meant, you could understand the message. My dad hated the discipline of national service, and he was often in trouble for various misdemeanours, the punishment for which was extra guard duty, or peeling huge mounds of potatoes, or cancelled home leave, which so upset my mum, Jean who was a very law-abiding person and wanted to see him. 
When I was born in 1957, we lived in a 16 feet long caravan. That's 4.8 metres. And we also lived there when my brother Mark was born in 1959. Debbie was born in 1960. And in early 1962, we moved into a two bedroomed rented terraced house in Heath End, as I would soon be going to Hale School at the age of five. We had a freezing cold outside toilet and a mangle. Living in such confined conditions in the caravans with my family, it is not surprising that I love the domestic. Stories of people's habits, good and bad, their loves, hates and hobbies, what made them laugh or cry, how discipline was maintained or not, how serious or comical they were, their joys, sorrows, meal times, illnesses, family sayings, everything about the domestic family life of people from all walks of life and all periods of history fascinates me. People fascinate me too in all their glorious and not so glorious conditions and characters. Does it interest you the way it interests me that two children born of the same parents can be so different. Psychologists tell us that birth position, eldest, middle child, youngest, is very influential and of course the individual experiences we have shape us profoundly. Take Esau and Jacob, the twin sons of Isaac and Rebecca and grandsons of Abraham, mentioned in our Genesis reading. They were twins, so born practically at the same time, but were very different from one another. They struggled with one another in Rebecca's womb and they struggled with one another throughout their lives. Both did right, both did wrong at different times. Each of their parents had a favourite son also. Isaac loved Esau and Rebecca loved Jacob. Jacob preferred home life in a tent. Esau liked the outdoor life of hunting. Jacob did household, or should it be tent hold, uh, jobs like cooking a lentil stew, which might have had some meat in it if it was red, or maybe it was an orangey lentily red. Coming back to the tent one day, ravenously hungry after a long day hunting, Esau made a rash promise of giving Jacob his birthright in exchange for a bowl of stew. Esau let his fleshly needs, his hunger, overtake his common sense. This sounds very much like a normal family to me, with some favouritism, impetuosity, sneaky, deceitful behaviour. No family is unique. We all have challenges. Moving to our gospel passage now. We have the well-known parable of the sower sowing valuable seed. Perhaps it's a bit like the experiences which shape the lives of members of the same family. The seeds have mixed fortunes depending on where they fall. As my mum Jean used to say, many a slip twixt cup and lip. There's a lot which can go wrong between the start and end of any process. Jesus is talking to a large crowd of mainly rural workers, so this image of a sower sowing seed will be familiar to them. However, it will not necessarily help them understand what Jesus means by the parable. For the listeners, this may as well be Morse code Jesus is transmitting from the boat on the lake. If the listeners do not understand Morse code, they will not understand the deeper meaning of the parable. They need to really listen and reflect, not just hear the surface story. 
This parable is a profound analogy between the processes of nature and God's grace. Both seeds and people need proper nourishment, whether that is good, deep, tilled soil for seeds to grow strong roots, or consistent nurture and unconditional love in the case of people. Our emotional security as adults is largely determined by how secure we feel as children in the love and safety provided by our parents or other caregivers and how secure and loved by God we feel. That security in God's love may not come to us until our adult life, as it did for me. Jesus explains that the sower is himself or God. Verse 13, 9 states that the sowing of the seed is in a person's heart. Accepting the pure and unconditional love of God, of Jesus Christ, into our hearts, brings forth a fruitful, bountiful harvest, many, many times what we might have expected, thus creating an outpouring of love from us to others in need of God's love and care. Sowing seed is proper work. Seeds and human hearts and their various journeys are so precious and it is work which can be very demanding. However, I believe we are responsible for the effort in the work, not the outcome of the work. Just as the sower is not wholly responsible for where the seed lands or what happens to it, it is God who oversees the outcome of our labours and God who works beside us as we labour. We so often strive and work harder and harder to achieve a goal and forget that our very existence on this planet is an element of God's unmerited grace, that our skills and talents are gifts from God, and that our futures are in God's hands, not our own. Am I loving myself enough to rest when I need to, to spend quality time with my now retired husband Steve? And can I trust God more deeply to care for and love those I feel anxious about. Anxiety about other people drives my overworking. And now our Romans passage. Saint Paul didn't mind hard work. He worked very hard, establishing and guiding the early church. He worked as hard at that as he had at persecuting Christians before his conversion and he had, as a Jew, also worked very hard to try to keep the Jewish law. I work hard, much too hard. I am a workaholic and I forget, as my all too human mind has a habit of forgetting, the obvious that my very life and faith are gifts from a loving God to me, that God is not a hard taskmaster, forcing me to keep up with the gruelling schedule I set for myself. I worry terribly about doing wrong also, of breaking unwritten rules or upsetting other people. I do not need to fear or worry as much as I do. God has it all covered. I live each day, one day at a time, in the power of the Holy Spirit, which dwells in me and dwells in you. By the Holy Spirit, God raised Jesus Christ from the dead and by that same Spirit, God will raise me from the dead when I die. What I have worked so hard to manage from below is being managed from above. God is on my side, on your side, 
not against us. All that God has breathed into my heart and your heart will be brought to perfection by God's grace alone, not by burning the midnight oil. I'd like to sing for you to end this ser sermon, a worship song by Dave Bilbrough. I am a new creation. I am a new creation, no more in condemnation. Here in the grace of God I stand. My heart is overflowing, my love just keeps on growing. Here in the grace of God I stand and I will praise you Lord and I will praise you Lord and I will sing of all that you have done a joy that knows no limit a lightness in my spirit here in the grace of god i stand amen let us confess our faith in the words of the nicene creed we believe, we believe in, in one, one god, god the father, father the, the almighty, almighty maker of heaven, of heaven and, and earth, earth of all, all that, that is seen and unseen. We believe, we believe in one, in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the only the Son of God, God eternally, eternally begotten, begotten of the Father, God, God from God, God light from light, from light true, true God from true, true God, God, begotten, begotten not, not made, of one being with the Father, the Father through, him through him all, all things, things were made. made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, he became, he became incarnate, incarnate from the from Holy, Holy Spirit and the Virgin, Virgin Mary, Mary and was made man. For our, our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He suffered, he suffered death, death and was buried. buried. On the third, the third day, day he rose, rose again, again in accordance, accordance with the scriptures. With the scriptures. He, ascended he ascended into heaven and he's seated at the right hand of the Father. Father. He will, will come, come again, again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe, we believe in the, in the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Lord, the giver, the giver of life, life who, proceeds who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and who with, who with the, Father the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken, has spoken through, through the prophets. prophets. We, believe we believe in one in holy, Catholic, Catholic and apostolic, apostolic Church. church. We, acknowledge we acknowledge one baptism, baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look, we look for the resurrection, the resurrection of the dead and the life, life of the world, world to come. come. Amen. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Let us pray to God through whose word our words are given life. Almighty God, we ask you to guide your whole church, all church leaders, all Christian people all over the world, all whom you call to your service. Guide all those who minister in our diocese and bless Andrew and Joe, our bishops. Bless our parish, Alan, Leslie, John and John, our priests, and all who are sisters with the ministry within this parish. God of wisdom and understanding, be with your church as we seek to understand your purpose and your will. Guide us as we seek to find ways to raise the necessary money to run this parish. Nurture and tend all who are new to faith. By your Holy Spirit, bring to fruition the seed of your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the world, watch over our Queen, guide and inspire her ministers of state and all in authority under her. Watch over the nations and bless the families of the earth. Be with the peoples of Syria and the Yemen, all refugees, all who are oppressed or treated unjustly or discriminated against. God of endurance and reliability, be with your world, obsessed by many cares and short-term gains. Renew the face of the earth. By your Holy Spirit, inspire all people to sustainable living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of seed time and harvest, be with all who tend and manage the land for food to nourish and spaces for recreation. By your Holy Spirit, open our hearts to share the fruits of the field in their seasons. May our families and friends, our neighbours and colleagues, receive the grace of the Spirit to be rich in good work and sure faith. As we start to come out of the lockdown, Help us to show respect and consideration for others and help us not to be too impatient to get things back to normal, but to take care so that this virus does not flare up again. Watch over all people who are returning to work in these difficult times and also be with those who have lost their jobs. We give thanks for all those who work in the NHS and in other essential services and those who work to provide us with all that we need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope and consolation, deal tenderly with all for whom life is full of struggle. Give them strength and patience in their sufferings. We pray for the dying and those who love and tend them, for the bereaved and the desolate, for all those who are in distress, for those who are in pain and all who are sick, whether in body, mind or spirit, especially the people who have asked for our prayer, prayers, for all those whose names you see before you and all others who are known to us and who we name in the silence of our hearts. Loving God, give them comfort and healing. May they sense your reassuring presence and know that you are there with them, wherever their journey takes them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
we bring to your love, Lord, all who have died and those who mourn them. We pray especially for those whose names you see before you and all others who have died recently and re remember all whose anniversaries are this week. May they have peace in the joy of your presence forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May our prayers be as the good seed bearing fruit for the kingdom of God. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, of St. John, St. Mark, St. George and all your saints, we commend ourselves and all people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. bread. And forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against, against us. And lead us not, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen.